Hey, this is Josh. I'm from the band Wild Throne, and you're watching Pure Grain Audio. Wild Throne is me, Jeff, and Noah. We live in Bellingham, Washington, which is this kind of college town just north of Seattle, south of Vancouver. Uh, we've been living there for years, been in bands with each other for years. And once we started doing Wild Throne, it really actually kind of started clicking and gelling and kind of took off in this direction and brought us to Canada. Um, I think at the time, the name meant like freedom or maybe like a relationship between lawlessness and total control. I mean, I don't think anymore it really means much to us, but I think that's what was going through our heads at the time. It's been really positive for the most part. I mean, we hardly ever have to deal with anybody taking shots at us or pops at us. People generally, when they discover it and uh, figure it out and give it a chance, they find something that they like, I notice, far more often than the other way around. So it, I'm happy, you know, I try not to depend on too much external validation when it comes to that stuff. I try and just keep it linear, you know, make the stuff, do it the way I want to, believe in it, be okay with that. Um, but it's really great that it's gotten such a great reaction so far. We, were, we had a song called Harvest of Darkness, and then it ended up being one of the stronger songs on the record. It opened the record, and it kind of summed up kind of going a little crazy and wrote a really crazy record about it. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of darkness in that time, and it, was, it just worked. Um, to be totally honest about the EP, um, you know, we'd been musicians for years, but we'd mostly just been kind of spazzing out in instrumental bands and just playing as fast and hard as we could, and that was what's important. When we started this band, we wanted to try our hand at writing songs, writing choruses. You know, I'd never really written any lyrics, I'd never really sung before, and we tried it, and that was the EP. That was our first try. And we knew it worked, and so uh, when we went in to do the rest of the album, <clears throat> Uh, we had a lot more confidence, you know, we had, we still had plenty to prove to ourselves, or to each other, that we could do it, but we, we knew we had done it before, and we're like, let's just do it again, but better. And uh, I feel like we did. Yeah, I can hear, when I hear it, I can, I can hear uh, a little more confidence and preparedness in uh, the full length record. I'll usually like something will pop in my head like a melody or something and then uh, I'll write riffs around it in my head for a couple of weeks and then I'll start before I even even touch a guitar I kind of try and figure out something in my head it's a process that works for me and then I'll br kind of bring that raw uh, content to the band and uh, you know I'll have a lot of ideas about drums but not, not all the ideas that are in my head you know flush out very well so you know we have a, a a collaborative uh, process. And so we end up usually writing something about seven or eight minutes longer than it needs to be because <laughs> we're old, you know, heavy metal prog heads. And then when we get in the studio, uh, at least for the EP and for this record, um, Ross, our producer, really helped us kind of whittle it down to just the, just, just the good stuff. And even that, it's a long record, but it was probably twice as long before we cut it all out. When we first got involved with Roadrunner, um, when we were in New York, we were pretty much unsigned. We had just done the EP. We didn't know what was going to happen next. We didn't know if we were going to get to make our record or not. We desperately wanted to. And um, those guys came out, and they were just, there were a couple of labels talking to us at the time, but they just came out, and they were just 100% all in. They wanted in now. They, knew, they loved it. They believed in it. And then, then, you know, they really earned our trust that weekend that we were in New York hanging out with those guys. And, uh, you know, it's a big deal to a musician, you know, signing to a label of that caliber and being able to work with people that have been in the business that long and had so much success. I'll never forget that weekend in New York. That was amazing. Um, yeah, we, we all give each other a quick high five, just kind of checking with each other. It's like, this is going to be good, you guys. It's, you know, I don't think, maybe it's a little, uh, nothing too unique. I've seen bands do funny, funny stuff like uh, Red Fang. All those guys will just kind of have a polite handshake on stage right before, like in front of everybody, you know. I just think that stuff's cute, but the high fives work for us. We get stoked. <laughs> well, 
Well, I usually try and control way too much of it. Like I, cause I, I'll, I'll start writing a riff and I'm already thinking about the show and like how the lights are gonna look and like, you know, sometimes I use my pedal board as kind of instrument. So I kind of start thinking out of my head, how am I gonna do that? Generally when I start getting too into that kind of stuff, I kind of get in my own way and getting with the guys and getting in the studio, they help that side of me that just kind of lets me just let it go and just let it take its own course. So it's kind of a mixture of all those kinds of things like organic, let it flow, let it flow, slash control, 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 oh my god, oh my god, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. But it's never like that. It's great, you know.